Good morning. We hope you are had a good weekend. And today marks what many people call the birthday of the church. Some of you have probably seen things posted like, are we going to serve cake and ice cream? Well, that would be nice. But this is the beginning of the church with the, the sending of the Holy Spirit during Pentecost. And we all are familiar with that story. So we celebrate and recognize the presence of the Holy Spirit within and among us today. Our presider and preacher is Carrie Cibola, a member of our church, as you know, and each uh, month she is preaching and presiding for us, and today is that day. She's a deaconess student at the Lutheran Deaconess Association in Valparaiso. Once again, we'll ask you if you are watching us on Facebook, uh, we would love for you to say good morning or peace or, or uh, good to see you or something. Just let us recognize you that, you're, that uh, you can see us, we can't see you, and so we'd like to know that, that you're uh, listening to us this morning.
Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Forgive us and give us strength to turn from sin and to serve you in newness of life. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. O God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the second chapter of Acts. Pentecost was a Jewish harvest festival that marked the 50th day after Passover. Luke portrays the Holy Spirit being poured out upon the disciples before the gathered and astonished people assembled in Jerusalem for the festival. Filled with the Spirit, the disciples were able to witness to the power of Christ's resurrection. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 104. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number, living things both great and small. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them. They gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth, and it trembles. You touch the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Our second reading is from the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Paul is helping the Corinthians understand the relationship between our God-given unity and the Spirit-created diversity. 
The Spirit creates the unity of faith and gives all Christians diverse gifts for the common benefit of all. We need one another's diverse spiritual gifts because the same Spirit has given them to each person for the common good. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the free Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The risen Jesus appears to his disciples, offering them a benediction, a commission, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe that each of us is doing the very best that we can to manage during this time. But if you are anything like me, something sometimes comes along that just undoes you. As I sat down to read the text for this Sunday, I read the first verse of the reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together at one place. They were all together at one place. That did it. I was undone and my tears fell. They still fall. Today we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe that we come to faith, remain in faith, and live our lives of faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. We confess this every Sunday, together, wherever we are. You may recall from your catechism classes, what is the work of the Holy Spirit? Although we are scattered and not physically together, the Holy Spirit calls us through the gospel, enlightens us with his gifts, makes us holy, keeps us in the true faith, just as he calls, gathers, enlightens, and makes holy the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one common true faith. The Holy Spirit keeps us together at one place. 
most assuredly, we were created for community. On Tuesday of last week, presiding bishop Elizabeth Eaton was interviewed on CNN to discuss how the ELCA is navigating a return to in-person worship during the COVID-19 pandemic. She began by stating that the church has never been closed. She explained that we have found different ways to gather now, digitally mostly, but prayer, Bible study, and serving our neighbors have continued. In response to criticism of faith versus freedom, she noted that the church has been here before. During the plague in 1527 in Wittenberg, Martin Luther recommended similar precautions that we have in place today to practice social distancing, although it was termed differently back then, to pay attention to science and medicine, to not risk someone else's health, and to keep essential services of the church going. And we have done all of this. She said that being careful is a way for us to be faithful, and protecting others is the most faithful response. She said that the ELCA is doing this by relying on the CDC and science, which she remarked is a gift from God, listening to state and local officials, and having updated protocols already in place, such as wearing masks, social distancing, refraining from the sacrament, and not singing, as we find a way to get through this together safely. She ended the interview by re-emphasizing that the church has never been closed and that our work of social justice and feeding and caring for the most vulnerable has never stopped. Neither have our prayers. And in our own homes, neither has our singing. Today, as our state begins to reopen in various ways, you have been invited into conversation with our congregational leaders about how and when we can start meeting again. We all long to be together, to take communion together, to sing together. It is perhaps one of the gifts of this horrible yet holy time that reminds us that nothing can replace seeing one another face to face. It reminds us of the gift of community in Jesus Christ. Also in community, I lament with my sisters and brothers, with humanity, at the events of last week that began in Minneapolis and continue throughout the country today. I remain undone in the Holy Spirit in witness of the multitude of ministry that endures while church buildings are closed. I have a difficult story to share with you this morning. I want to tell you about my LDA deacon brother, David Rojas Martinez, who serves in the Twin Cities at a church adjacent to the third precinct where the protests and rioting began last week. This church to which he was recently called was opened as a medic center for those needing care and or a safe space during the riots. David writes, my city is ashes of glowing embers ready to reignite. I was in the middle of moving into my new apartment located in the very neighborhood that smells of tear gas and smoke this morning. Last night, I caught fitful sleep as fires glowed, sirens blared, and a mixture of death, fear, anger, intimidation choked the air. I'm safe, but that matters little to me at the moment. I have always been safe, yet so many around me cannot breathe. I'm making my way across streets littered with broken glass that cut away at the Minnesota nice good order that translate to the oppression of so many. Ashes that coat anything falsely shiny, dripping water drowning false narratives. My liberation is bound up in the liberation of all my fellow humans, especially the most vulnerable. I walk on sacred ground of the Lakota people and I have no words, I have no prayers left. If anything, I challenge the divine to end up with a scratchy throat and burning eyes and to shout into the void until she is hoarse. I can't breathe. David writes two days later, I have completed the requirements for my four-year Master of Divinity degree. A cheeky, lighthearted social media post was percolating in my mind in preparation for this weekend's online graduation ceremonies. 
until George Floyd was murdered, until yet another black man in the US was lynched. I ask that you refrain from congratulating me on this post. I ask that you comment what steps you are taking towards creating a more just society in which black folks can breathe without fear. Gift me a sense that maybe my friends will be a part of creating a better tomorrow. Two weeks ago, I started working full-time at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, Minneapolis, as their deacon, whose title is Community Engagement Coordinator. In these past two weeks, I have found that there are no graduate-level classes that teach, looking out from your church office through boarded-up windows, not attempting to save property, not in fear of what may happen to the building, but in doing our best to be a sanctuary for anyone inside our walls because our heavy doors remain open even as we shield those inside. Standing on the corner as smoke rises from all around you and people dazedly run towards you in hope that you can offer help. That you will sit under a tree beside a young man who is uncontrollable and all you can say is you're alive, you're breathing, I'm here with you. Helping a young woman climb the stairs because she cannot breathe and needs an inhaler and as she leaves she will say you are my angel you'll know that this is not heaven. Pouring milk all over others, yourself, and the sidewalk as you attempt to ease pain from tear gas readily sprayed by those called to protect us. Plenty have told me I am not called. Plenty have told me I am. I myself doubt and I believe depending on the day. But I do know for certain that we cannot go on with these modern day lynchings and terrorizing of working class folk especially those disproportionately affecting non-white-skinned folk. I do know that these sleepless nights, this righteous anger, and this pain I'm observed from others as I stand on my church's corner must propel me to continue shouting into the void even as it seems to grow and grow. This is my graduation celebration, a fumbling attempt to figure out ways of how to be a sanctuary for others. David closes with, this is my new job toast. I will always be on the other side of the oppressed because if there is a God, he is right there too. My friends, the church has never been closed. David issued his Facebook friends a call to action and I promised him I would say the name George Floyd today and share David's and Holy Trinity's story with you as a reminder to us all that breath is holy. It is as holy as the message from Jesus in our gospel lesson this morning. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Why does Jesus do this? It is here. We are called and equipped to serve. The commandment to love one another is our mission in the world. During this week's LDA online Bible text study, we discussed that love is an easy word to oversimplify. It's not always hearts and flowers. Love does not always look like love. Love looks like speaking out against injustice. Love looks like confronting racism. Love looks like educating ourselves about the systemic inequality of the marginalized in our country and then working to eradicate it. Love looks like being a prophetic voice and shining a bright light on what is not right. Love looks like taking up the cross and risking the hostile stare. Love is responding to Christ's call to action. What visions and dreams does the Holy Spirit give to our community? How can we be witnesses to the person and work of Jesus Christ in this particular place and time? There is no doubt that this is a strange and troubling time, but we as the church have been here before, waiting and hoping, praying and trusting, and we are not alone. That same Holy Spirit who showed up in fire and wind to the first disciples calls us too to be witnesses to Jesus in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, Minneapolis, and Atlanta, Detroit, and Griffith, and to the ends of the earth. That same Holy Spirit, 
who is alive and active today, will give us what we need to answer the call. Amen. our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe believe in in one God, God, the the Father Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of of all that is seen and unseen. We believe believe in one one Lord Jesus Jesus Christ, the only only Son of God, God, eternally begotten of the Father, God God from God, God, light from light, light, true God God from true God, God, begotten not made, of one one being being with the Father, through him him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, 
he came down from heaven, heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This morning, we open our prayer petitions with two petitions that are not in your bulletin if you are following along where you are. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, our nation is in turmoil. For those who knew George Floyd best and loved him most, bring them your consolation and direct their hearts to you. For Derek Chauvin, who put his knee on Floyd's neck for seven minutes until he died, we ask for the mercy of repentance and the judgment of justice. As this has unfolded publicly on national television, many are alarmed. As souls are stirred, your children throughout the nation and in our area are anguished and driven to protest. As some of these protests of the voices long to be heard nationwide have turned into riots and destruction, please hear, comfort, and protect your children. God, we need you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. How glorious is your creation, O God. Thank you for enabling our witness of what you have accomplished through Doug Hurley and Bob Bankin, the two astronauts who have soared into space from Cape Canaveral, Florida yesterday and are now orbiting around the Earth. We ask to keep them safe, and we thank you for their example of your unfathomable works. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe due to air pollution. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort, especially those directly affected by marginalization, the current rioting, and the global pandemic, and those we name now in our hearts or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of friendship. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary to her home, give us a spirit of welcome to those whom we meet in this congregation and outside these doors. Surprise us daily with unexpected grace that we rejoice in every blessing you send. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Please join me in the next petition. For Griffith, Griffith Lutheran, Lutheran Church, Church help, help us to use our many blessings, blessings to grow our church, to make a difference in our lives and in our community. Our community. Help so us that we may grow Christ-centered relationships in our communities through love and service. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of hope. As you have led your saints in all times and places, stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your Spirit uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, behold the risen Christ. blood of Christ shed for you. If you were worshiping with us last week, you noticed that our video went off, the audio stayed on, and we want to thank Deanna for that, because it was a software issue, and had she tried to fix it, then everything would have gone off. So thank you, Deanna, and also happy birthday yesterday. So she has been very faithful in helping us with our Facebook. We want to remind you, as uh, Carrie said, that you have received a survey. Those of you who do not have internet, or even if you do, I, the survey also was in the newsletter that you received this week. So we would like for you to fill that out. It lets you know if we meet uh, early, or earlier than what we might, uh, what kinds of things we have to put into place as far as singing and communion and so on. And it lists all of those there. And we need. We'd like to hear from you as to what, what you uh, have to say. Thank you again, Carrie. Uh, what a powerful message. What a, we are so thankful that she is here with us. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.